first case was published, published last year in the New England Journal of Medicine. This was a 31-year-old male who presented to the emergency department with a two-week history of swelling of the left ear. The costochondral joints were tender, and his left knee was swollen and tender, and the only remarkable laboratory finding was the ESR, or erythrocyte cementation rate, which is a very nonspecific measure of inflammation or activation of the immune system. So that was elevated, but not really anything else on labs. And you can see from these photos on the left on the physical exam, they noticed that his left ear was tender and swollen in the pinna area, but the lobe, the ear lobe was spared, and that's something that is pretty commonly um, the feature is the ear lobe is spared. And then on the right-hand picture is what we see called the saddle nose deformity, which he had developed over the last year before he came to the ED. But his history had been going on for a while. He had a six-month history of weight loss, fatigue, generalized aches. And two years prior, within those two years, he had multiple courses of antibiotics for recurrent ear infection and pain in both ears. And so they diagnosed RP. And they treated him with prednisone, which alleviated some of his pain and swelling within two weeks. And then afterwards, they put him on methotrexate and were able to slowly taper his prednisone. The next case was just, it just came out in the American Journal of Medicine. This was a 43-year-old male. He presented again to the emergency department with four weeks of ear pain on both sides and tenderness. And the reason why he sought care was he thought he had an ear infection. And then he also had several weeks preceding his emergency department visit of chills, redness, and pain in both eyes, and several years of hearing loss in his left ear, intermittent aching pain, aching and pain in his hands, elbows, knees, and ankles. And as you can see in the picture, both of his eyes, um, he had inflammation, he had bilateral scleritis, he had the bilateral swelling of and tenderness of ears, but again, sparing the earlobes, and bilateral joint tenderness in his hands, wrists, elbows, and ankles. His ESR and a similar test, the CRP, were elevated, like we saw in the last case, but other autoantibodies, such as the ANA, were negative. And in RP, in fact, we don't often see many of these autoantibodies that are common to so many of the other autoimmune conditions. They did a contrast CT of his chest, which showed tracheal and bronchial calcifications, but minimal soft tissue thickening at those sites. And they treated him with high-dose prednisone, as well as prednisone eye drops, and he responded promptly. They added Dapsone afterwards. So I think those two cases illustrate a lot of how patients present. And when we were at the NIH, we had the opportunity to observe a couple of the patients who had traveled there for diagnosis and care. So when they went on this NIH visit, these two people had been to the NIH before and were coming for a follow-up, but um, it wasn't until they originally went to the NIH that they were properly diagnosed. So I'm not gonna go into their whole histories, but a few points. The adult female who is in her 40s, I believe, again had a several year history of various nonspecific symptoms prior to diagnosis, but what really got her to end up at the NIH was that she was having a lot of respiratory symptoms. She would wake up at night with a choking sensation and difficulty catching her breath. It sounded like it was really, really scary and impactful. And then she had significant pain, and I put these icons here to remind me that she had cut her hair very short because she said even her hair brushing against her ear was excruciating. And then she couldn't wear her glasses because the bridge of her nose was so tender. So that, that, that was the first RP patient I'd ever seen, and it really made an impact. Um, there was another pediatric male case. I believe he was around 10, and he had brief episodes, around 30 minutes or less, of ear pain and redness. So he would come in from playing. His ear would be red. He'd complain. His mom's like, whatever. You know, I don't know what you're talking about. And they would never have it present to see a physician. And I think she tried to take a couple pictures at some point when this happened more frequently. And then he would say he had severe eye pain. He said he would feel like his eyes were popping out of his head. And again, the mom, you know, she was concerned, but as any parent, you can't see anything, so you're trying to figure out what is going on. It doesn't make sense. He saw clinicians. And because he also had a lot of asthma-like features, they never really explained what else was going on, but they thought he had asthma. And this is where I want to make the point that I think there is a lot of mistaken diagnosis, and in the kids especially, there's probably a lot of asthma-like symptoms that are getting, 
treated essentially as asthma, but then the treatments aren't really working. So we probably, if we look differently at some of the cases and kids, would find more RP.